Now that we've looked at the basics of Fusion 2.5 and looked at how to build a basic maze game, now let's look at how to build a platformer game. Before that, I'd like to show you some resources. And here's a couple that I show my students, and there's a lot of these on the internet, but there's a site called opengameart.org where you can find different sprites and backgrounds and sound effects and music and things like that. You can also search by license and there's a lot of good things they can use there. There's another one called um, Game Art 2D and you can find free sprite sheets with all the different actions. You can also find um, you know different free tile sets with background images as well as you know the ground and different objects for your game. And then one other I'd like to point out is there's a site called freesound.org and you can also search by license here but you can find all kinds of different sound effects and music that you can download for free. This site you actually do need to create an account but it is free um, to do so. So there's a few different resources I like to show my students that are, that are helpful. I've already went ahead on those um, these three sites and downloaded some different assets to use in the game itself. So we're gonna go ahead and just start a new project and from the storyboard editor here we're gonna go ahead and double click and go into the frame editor. I'm actually not going to use this grid so I'm going to go ahead and not snap to the grid. I'm not going to show the grid at all <clears throat> and here it is. So if you need to you can zoom in a little bit which I'm going to do so I can see a little bit bigger in my area. In fact let's go back out to 100 for now. Um, but one thing I do want to point out if you lose anything like your workspace or your properties and things like that you can always go to view and you can go to toolbars and click on the thing that you need and it will come back. Also you have this library toolbar that should load in the bottom that has built-in assets and sprites you can use. So if you go into your local library and you double click you can see there's different you know textures you can use and different surfaces and you know if you go to games there's different objects and, and all sorts of different things like that you can use in your games that are already already built in. So I've already got a few things so I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and bring those in. Um, you can import them in um, or you can drag and drop them. I'm going to go ahead and just do the drag and drop method. So I've got this uh, temple run uh, person that we'll use as our character and I have got there it is, um, some different objects and backgrounds and things to use for that game. So number one, I'm just going to take this, drag it and drop it in here and let go. And doing it this method it's going to basically ask, okay, what do you want this to be? And in this case I want it to be a quick backdrop because a backdrop um, will basically stretch if I need it longer. It's just going to distort it. Whereas a quick backdrop will actually just repeat. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick backdrop. You can see that's really, really big. So I'm going to go ahead and size this thing down a little bit. And then from there we're going to go ahead and just as you can see, like I said, if I, if I pull this longer, it's just going to keep on going and get bigger and bigger. So that will work for the background. Um, next thing we're going to do is start bringing in some of the different um, tiles to use as the objects for the background. So I'm going to take this one first. I'm going to drag and drop it in. And it's going to ask me what I'd like that to be. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose backdrop. And that's pretty big, so I'm going to go ahead and shrink that down so it's quite a bit smaller. That looks like that's a fine size. Let's go ahead and pull in a couple other objects. Same thing here, it's a little bit too big. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink this down so it should fit right about the same size as that one. And you can use your arrow keys if you need to fine tune the position. So something like that looks great. And now that we've got a size, we can go ahead and just duplicate this one across for quite a while. So I can right click and duplicate it. And I'm gonna go ahead and do one row and how many columns? I don't know, maybe six. You can see that's gonna go ahead and keep moving. And then maybe we wanna take, whoops. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this. I'm gonna right click and lock that. Um, you can also take these two. I'm just gonna drag a box around the two that I want or hold down shift and select them both and I'm just going to hold down control and copy those and bring those over here as well. So we kind of got an area to maybe fall down and in fact let's just take this whole thing 
and pull it over here. So we've got an area we're gonna have to jump across. Okay, so that looks good. And maybe we want a couple little floating platforms up in the air. So we need something up here we can we can jump on top of at some point. That needs to be a little bit higher. And you can see how we can basically just use these pieces and start to pull them in little by little. I can right click and I can um, I can arrange, let's say I can go to order, I can send that to the back. So and that takes it actually behind the backdrop. So let's talk about that for a moment. Um, I've got a layers toolbar over here on the side. If I click on that, it should open. Um, I've got everything currently on that one layer, which I don't really want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. And I'm going to swap these places. I'm just going to drag them. And then I'm going to select my background. And I just control shift clicked it to unlock it. And I'm going to move that onto this layer, right? So it's the only thing now on the very background layer. I can't interact with it, but that's okay because it's the background anyway. So I'm going to unlock that. I'm going to go back to layer two so I can work on it. And now let's move over just a little bit. Um, and now we can see the water actually showing up. If I play my frame, if I hit run my frame, you can see it and it sits there. It looks great. Okay. Next part we need to do is maybe put in some objects besides this. What else is there? Um, if we go to back a little bit, we can go to objects and we've got several things that we can put in. We can put in rocks and signs and crates and all sorts of things. So let's go ahead and do that. So we can go ahead and put OK on this thing. In fact, let's move these up quite a ways into the air. You'll see why in a moment. So we've got a rock. Let's make that kind of small. And let's go ahead and put in Let's put in a tree and we'll use it as a ladder. So I'm going to go ahead and take this tree and put it in as a backdrop. And I'm going to go ahead and shrink this thing down. But I am going to make it very tall because it's going to be a ladder, basically. So we've got a tree that's kind of planted right here. Yeah, it looks good. And we can keep on going from there. So let's just make this, make this a little bit longer. Drag this out even more. If it'll let me, we'll just do a few pieces at a time. Okay, so something like that looks great, and we'll keep on moving. And once again, I can select my background if I want to match that up, unlock it, and I can go ahead and stretch my very, very background here. Um, and that looks good. So, Let's lock that back up, select this layer. Next thing we're going to need is a character. So I'm going to go back in here and find the character that I like to use. And I'm not going to use all, so these are animated states. You can put these all together and it'll work as an animation. Um, we're not going to take the time to do all these, but I will show you just a little bit. So we need an idle state where the character is just standing. So let's go ahead and take the idle state in for the moment. It's going to be an active object and this sprite is really large so let's go ahead and shrink this thing down maybe we'll size this thing down to a height of I don't know 60 I want it to stay proportional whoops let's try that let's try that again let's go ahead and cancel that Double click, let's check proportional first. I'm going to go 60. There we go. And now you can see that that actually took the uh, player completely out of the frame. So let's try that one more, one more time in a different way. I guess we'll just click right here and do it this way. Um, you could click here, right? And you do have a size here that you can adjust it to. So I'll just use this as a reference. So we'll just do it this way because it's quick and easy. Uh, I'm going to size the sprite down something that looks pretty good. I think that looks great. And that'll work for size momentarily. So if I go ahead and hit the play the frame again, if I run the frame, nothing works, nothing's happening yet. So what I'll need to do next is select the sprite and go to the movement. And I'm going to actually pick platform. Now when I do this, I'm gonna go ahead and move them up so you can see what happens here. 
I hit play, you see it just falls through everything. It's currently interacting with nothing. So we need to go ahead and give the player a few rules to start with. So we're going to go into the event editor and we're going to tell the player, right, when we're going to right click on the player and go to collisions and we're going to say when the player collides with, you could do another object if it weren't active, but we made all of those background pieces backdrops. So when the player collides with a backdrop, and that way this rule will work for all of them. So when they uh, collide with the backdrop, we would like him to right click there and stop. Player collides with the backdrop, player should stop. Let's play it and see what happens. It still falls through the ground and here's why. You have to now tell each of these objects what to be. Currently, if I select this piece and I go to the properties for it, when I select the runtime options, the obstacle type is none. It's not an obstacle at all. So if I tell it that it will be an actual obstacle, then the player will stop when he hits it. Um, platform is similar, but you can actually jump through the bottom of a platform and only stop on the top, and then a ladder you can climb. So this is going to be an obstacle. Right, and the next piece is going to be an obstacle. And now they all should be obstacles because we duplicated them. This rock should be an obstacle. This ladder, or this tree, will be a ladder. These should both be done. And everything else then should be done. So if we go ahead and play this now, you'll see the player stops and is now working. When it hits the rock, it slides over. If I go to the tree and I push up, it climbs like a ladder. And if I push the, the um, shift key, you can see that player will now, now jump and kind of apparently float over where the tree is. So maybe we need to move the tree over just a bit and the rock over just a bit. Okay, now as for the character working, um, if I select the character and we come in here to the movement type, you can change the speed, the acceleration, how fa fast he'll speed up, deceleration, how fast he's going to slow down, um, um, the gravity and the strength. Maybe I'm going to decrease gravity a bit. It will give him a little bit more strength, so he can jump quite a bit. You can also change the controls um, if you want to use your arrow keys just to jump. Um, button one, I believe, is shift to jump. Button two is uh, either control or spacebar or something, or no jump at all. We'll leave it on button one and try it one more time. Now you can see now the character's got a lot more jump. In fact, much too much jump. So let's. Uh, Let's lower that just a little bit. Try it one more time. That's not too bad. And then now you can actually fall down, so that's good. So we'll climb up, jump over at the top. And now here's the problem, right? It does not follow the frame. So let's look at that next. So we need to get, right, here's this, here's the viewable area of our game, 640 by 480. You can click here and see. Oops, if I click on frame one, there we go. 640 by 480 is the size. Um, we need to change the size of not the application, because you could change the size of the application. That will that's it'll change the size of the viewable area. We just want to change the size of the level. So the level can move, but the viewable area will still be 640 by 480 because of the application. So on the frame size, we're going to change this to something much wider. So let's say a thousand and we'll go ahead and see if that works. You can see that extended it, but it's still not quite wide enough. So let's go maybe 1400, and that's a little bit too far. And we'll just call that good enough. That's close enough, um, right? And so here's the viewable play area, and then here's the extra level area we can move across. So if I play it, still nothing's gonna work. So here's what we gotta do next. So next, we will come into the event editor, do a little coding, and we're gonna right click on this gear and say always. Something we always want to happen is for the camera to follow the player. So we're going to go to right below the storyboard controls. We're gonna to go to scrolling and we're gonna center the window position in the frame. And we're gonna do that not based off of specific coordinates. We're gonna make it relative to the player so the, it's going to, the camera's always going to follow the player, basically. So now, if we play the game again, and we get to the other side of that, you'll see the camera is now following the player, which is great. 
Okay, next part, let's make the background move at a different speed than the foreground. We'll create a little parallax movement to create some depth. So let's go back out and then we'll go into the layers. So here's all you gotta do. It's a fairly simple concept. As long as the things you want to move at different speeds are on different layers, it'll work. The idea is the things in the background should move slower than things in the, that are closer to the camera and it will create depth. So if I move to the background, and here's my x and y coefficients. x is left and right, y is up and down. 1 is basically 100%. So if I go tell the background to move at 0.7, it's going to move at 70% speed, and the foreground moves at 100% speed. If you add more layers and have them move at different speeds, it adds even more depth. But just to give you an example, now that we're moving, you can see the background is moving at a different speed than the foreground, and automatically that creates some depth in the game. And next we're going to get the character to shoot something or launch an object. First thing we need to do is create something for the character to shoot. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and insert an object. Let's do an active. And we'll just click up here out of the frame. I'm going to double click so it opens up inside of the frame editor. Um, as you can see, I actually put that on the wrong layer. So I'm going to unlock that and I'm going to click on this. I'm going to move that to frame 2 and relock that. Make sure that you're on the right layer when you're working. I'm going to take this, I'm going to double click and open it, and I'm going to clear it, and just do something very simple. Some sort of little laser or something like that. Maybe we'll make that just a little bit smaller even. And you can see there's extra room on it. You can double click and you can actually crop it down to size so it fits exactly. That'll work great. And so from there, we just need to tell it how to shoot. So we'll go into the event editor, and we're going to right click, and we're going to go to the keyboard and mouse, and say keyboard upon pressing a key. So I'm going to just hit that, I'm going to hit my space bar. So when I press my space bar, something should happen. So I want my character, right click, to launch an object, which is that. And it's going to ask me which direction I would like to shoot in. I'm going to use the direction of the active or of the player. So if I go ahead and try that now, when I press the space bar, you can see he shoots. He's shooting from basically the top of his head, and here's why. If we go ahead and double click back on the sprite, you've got an action point and a hot spot. Okay, the action point is where things are going to take place from. You see where that action point is. I'm going to put that when the character is facing this direction. I want that to be from the front of the character. I'm actually going to copy that frame. And then I'm going to right-click and paste it, and I'm going to flip it, right-click and flip it horizontally. And when he's facing left, I'm going to have it be on the other side. So the right side is the correct direction, the left side is correct. And when we hit OK, now when we play it, and we go shoot, you can see it's shooting out of the correct direction. Although we get some weird movements depending on which way I'm facing when I shoot. So here's how we can fix that. So let's do a little extra code. So rather than when the space bar is pressed, right? So we're going to do when the spacebar is pressed and another condition is met. When both of those conditions are true, then something will happen. So I'm going to right click on number three and I'm going to insert a new or add a new condition. So I'm going to also right click on the player and check the player's direction. So we'll use right first. So I'm going to say when the player is facing right. So when the player is facing right and the spacebar is clicked, both of those are true then I want something to happen. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to right click. I'm going to have launch object happen. And I would like the that to be launched. And I want it to be launched in a specific direction this time. Right? And that did not actually go where we wanted. So let's see. There we go. Launch in a selected direction. I want it to be launched to the right and to the right only. Hit OK. You can change the speed if you'd like to. So if the spacebar is pressed and we're facing right, it will only shoot right. And we'll do the same thing down here. So you could copy this and you can paste it. Control C, Control V, and then you can change this. So you can click on the sprite and say, you know, when the when the player is facing that way. But just for repetition's sake, let's do it again. New condition. So when the player, so let's test his direction, is facing left. And we're going to right click and add a new condition and the space bar is pressed, when both of those are true, then we want the player to launch an object, which is that object, 
and we want it to go 80 speed and we want it to only go left. So now if we go test that, player shoots only that direction no matter what. If I jump, if I'm facing this way, it only will shoot that way. So that's how you can get um, that to work, right? Now, now we can uh, add something called alterable values. So uh, maybe we want there to be a certain object the player hits before he is able to shoot. And here's how we do something like that. So if I select the player, you can come here and you can add an alterable value. By default, they're named A, B, C, D, E, F, and they keep going. But just to make it easy to understand, it's good to always just rename these. So I'm going to name this Firepower, just so it makes more sense. So it's set at zero currently, right? So if we go to the event editor, and we can say um, we're going to right click right here on the on the storyboard controls and say at the start of the frame something should happen. So at the start of the frame, I want the alterable value of the player to be um, set to zero just in case, right? So right when the frame starts, it's at zero. Now. I don't want him to be able to shoot unless he presses the spacebar, he's facing a direction, and his firepower is set to 1, which it's not. At the beginning, it's 0. So if I right-click here, oops, right-click and insert another condition, I'm going to right-click on the player, go to the alterable values, and I'm going to compare it. And I want, right, there's a lot of them, so firepower. If the firepower is 1, then I want the player to shoot. So if the player is facing right, the spacebar is pressed and firepower is one. All of those are true, then the player will shoot. We'll do the same thing here. Check the alterable value of the player. Firepower if it's one. And currently it's zero, nothing's gonna happen. We have to have something happen to set it to one. So we're gonna go put an object up here for the player to get. So let's go back into our sprites. And what is there? What's out? Uh, what's here? Something in the crate. That looks good. Let's go ahead and make that an active object. It's really big, so let's shrink that down. So there's some sort of magic crate up here with something in it. Okay, so when the player hits that crate, well, he's gonna he's gonna have his firepower changed. It's a power up. So we'll go back in the event editor. And we're going to say when the player collides with another object, which is the crate, we're going to first of all destroy the crate, so it goes away. And then we're going to set the player's alterable value and set the firepower to one. So now if we go play it, when I hit the, uh, the space bar, nothing happens. He cannot shoot, it's set to zero. When I climb up this and I jump over, that disappears and I now have firepower and it looks like I'm now stuck inside of that okay now you also notice that the player is kind of glitching right when I move to the right or the left he's jumping positions and let's look at why that is so if we go double click on the player and we go back in if we look at both frames they are the same size but if we look at the action point the action point for one is there and the other is there so that point is flipping spots so the whole sprite is moving you know, this width each time it switches directions. So you can take the, the hot spot and we'll put it in the bottom center, right below the sprite in the dead center on both frames. And now it should smoothly change back and forth from side to side with no problems. And you can also create enemies. Let's go ahead and create an enemy. Um, we're gonna insert an object and we'll just have the enemy look like this diamond for now. Make it a little bit bigger. And this thing's going to kind of move back and forth uh, as a path. So here's how you do that. You'd select that, you'd go to your movement type, go to static, and we're going to go to path. And we're going to edit that path. So we're just going to go ahead and do the single point movement, just to make it easy. So maybe the enemy can go back and forth between that spot and this spot. Each of these points has its own speed, so if you change one of the speeds, you'll need to click on the other one and change it as well, but we'll leave it there. And you've got some options. You've got loop the movement so that it continues to happen and it reverses at the end, which means once it gets to the end, it will go back to the beginning instead of just appearing at the beginning. So let's go ahead and check both of those. Hit OK. And now if we play this, when we move over there, 
you see the enemy is flying back and forth and we're sinking in the water. Okay, next part we need to do, add a little more code. So we're gonna say, if the enemy and the player collide, then the, the player is gonna be destroyed. We're gonna say, but if the, if the, uh, the bullet collides with the enemy, then the enemy will be destroyed. So let's go ahead and try that. If I shoot the enemy, I can't, and I disappear because I did not get the crate. So let's go up and jump over the top and jump down the water. Let's try it one more time. It's a difficult game, what can I say? All right, and you shoot, and anyway, um, let's try it one more time. I just, I just can't, can't uh, let that happen. And it destroys the enemy, right? And you can add other things like lives as well. So if we come in here, we can uh, right click, insert an object. If you go to the games category, there are lives. So you can go ahead and click up here. Um, and you know, instead of being destroyed, maybe, well, we could, we could do that. We could have, you know, when the player and the bad guy hit, one of the lives, so you can go here to, to the lives and you can take the lives away, but you see how it doesn't actually appear there? It's because that's just kind of a counter, but the actual lives live in the player. So if you come here under the player and right click, you can go to number of lives, subtract from number, you can take away one life, and then maybe also the player is going to not get destroyed, but instead you're gonna change the position of the player to go back to the beginning, All right, Back to here when he gets hit by the, the bad guy. Um, and that should take a life away. Let's go give that a test. He goes back to the beginning, he's got one life taken away, and it would continue to work that way. Um, beyond that, right, you can add sound effects if you'd like to. So let's look at it, do that when, when the player um, shoots. Let's go ahead right here under sound. We're going to right click and we're going to go to sample. We're going to play a sample. And you need to go and browse. If you browse from another application that will look in another game, we're going to browse from file. And we're going to go and navigate. I've got a few different sounds here. You can play them. <laughs> Sounds great. I'm going to hit uninterruptible, so that means nothing can interrupt that sound until it plays through. I'm going to hit OK, and that sound now works there. And if you want to copy it, you can actually click on this and drag down, and that's now an identical piece of code. So let's go ahead and play this now. So once we jump up here, right, and you can, you can add other sound effects the same way. Um, finally, what we probably need to add is to make our sprite. Um, have some sort of animation. So let's look at how to um, do that. So because I already brought in my sprite and sized it, this will be difficult because each of the sprites in this set are individual graphics. If it were a sprite sheet, it might be a bit easier. So here's what might be an easier thing to do. Um, I'm actually gonna go in here into the sprite itself and we're gonna go ahead and actually clear this and I'm gonna clear this. I'm actually gonna just basically clear everything in here. And this is something that's nice, is you can actually put in a placeholder as your sprite, like a square, and then add the sprite later. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear all of this stuff. I'm gonna go into to the stopped animation for the right, and I'm gonna go ahead and import um, one of the idle animations. So that looks great. I'm gonna hit open. That's gonna come in full size. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it on this side delete that. I'm going to right click and paste it. I'm going to get rid of this frame that has nothing on it. So I should now have um, that same sprite both directions. And I can right click on this one and flip it horizontally. And remember we may have to go back into um, the hot spot and put it on like the bottom center for both of these sprites as well. And then we might want to go to the action point and put that in the front of the sprite for when it shoots. Okay, next we're gonna to go to the walking and we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're gonna go just add a few of these just to make this quick. And we'll go into running 
And we're going to pick our first frame of running right there. I'm going to open that up, hit OK. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing again. Open up our second frame of running. And we'll skip one to make this a little faster. We'll go to frame two. Hit OK. Oops. Let's go ahead and undo that. We're going to actually add a frame first. There we go. And on frame two, we're going to go ahead and open up running two. Hit OK. We'll add another frame and do the same thing. We go running four. And one more. Let's add a frame. And we're going to open up running number six. We'll call that good for now. All right, we've got all of those. And then I'm going to go ahead and take all of those and copy them. Control C. I'm going to go to the left direction. And I'm going to hit Control V or right click. And I'm going to paste those. And I'm going to take all of them, right click, and flip them the opposite direction. And then once again on these, you're going to want to put the action point on the bottom center for all of them. You have to do this individually for each frame. And we will put the hot spot in the front for all of them. And we'll go to the opposite direction and we'll do the same thing here. Hot spot will be in the front. Or the action point rather. And then the hot spot will be on the bottom center of that frame for each of those. Okay, and then something important here is let's go ahead and look at it. So if I hit OK, you see my sprite is back in, but ginormous. So we'll go ahead and shrink that down, or my avatar rather. And once we're there, it should work pretty well, and it should be shrinking them all in proportion to each other, so this should work pretty well. So if I go ahead and hit play, you'll see that the player starts to look like it's running, but then it just stops and kind of ice skates. And here's why. So you double click, you can, when you go to the running state, when we go to the direction options, we need that to loop because it's playing those four frames and then stopping on the last frame. So we want it to loop those frames and we want it to loop in both directions. So now when we go ahead and hit OK and we play it, um, it runs the entire time it's supposed to be running. right? And so that is basically um, creating a, a platformer. And there's a lot more you can add to it. Um, and then as a quick reminder, you, when you save it, you save it normal and then you'll want to go ahead and build the application is like an exe file or you can send it out as um, like an html5 export as well.